Welcome back to Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler, and again, thank you for joining us wherever you are. Hit that subscribe button. Join the show here every weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And I am very excited for our next guest. The new movie, Fisherman's Friends, releases on digital and on demand on July 24th and tells the tale of a music executive trying to sign a group of fishermen who sing sea shanties to a music contract. And we have one of the stars of that said movie right now, James Purefoy, joining us. James, thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. You are live from my veg patch. I got to say, yeah, that is a great backdrop. That's probably one of the best ones we've seen. Where are yeah, you right it's now? All, it's entirely fake. Hang on. <laughs> all right. It's, no, it's still where am looking, I? looking I'm good. In, I'm, in the west, I'm in the west country of England, not far from where Fisherman's Friends were filmed. Well, speaking of Fisherman's Friends, you know, and with this, it's based on a true story as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that story and what do you do to prepare for something when you're playing actual people? Okay, uh, so the film is about these guys called, uh, they're part of a band called the Fisherman's Friends. Uh, and this is not a story about the throat lozenge. Um, it, that would not be an interesting film. However, it is an interesting film. It's about a band of fishermen who uh, created this group uh, to sing sea shanties. And every Friday night, they would sing on the harbor wall in this very small uh, Cornish village called Port Isaac. And they'd get maybe 100 people watching. And then one day, a music executive from Island Records came down to visit them, or uh, to visit on holiday, on vacation, saw them, and uh, signed them. And an incredibly unlikely story is that they went in to number six or seven in the album charts in the UK. And they regularly now tour and have made, I think, four or five albums. They The first one went platinum. It is a remarkable story. And I play Jim, who is the, the leader of the Fisherman's Friends, the singing group. Um, that's incredible as a story alone. Now, when it comes with to, to fishermen in particular, I mean, and I think this is true worldwide, there are a lot of superstitions that come into play. And even in the trailer uh -huh. for the movie, it kind of highlights some of those. Uh, when you're studying for this, what were some of the weirdest superstitions that you found out about with fishermen? Um, okay, you're not allowed to wear green on a boat. Who knew? Uh, I didn't. Um, you're not allowed to wear green because <laughs> otherwise it feels as if the land is calling you back to land. You're not allowed to have a woman on board, but, you know, in the silly old olden days, obviously. Um, there are just a number of strange things. You can't say certain words. You can't whistle. You can't do this. You can't do that. Uh, it's a job, in fact, to find out what you can do on a boat. That's, yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> that's a lot to try to uh, handle when you're getting onto that. Well, Looking at this, uh, something else I want to ask about, you know, and, and yeah. switching to tech just for a minute. And you, yeah, you know, being an altered carbon, which is obviously a futuristic tech world where you can switch uh -huh. bodies. When you're doing something like that, when it comes to technology, what is one piece of tech from that that you wish you had now? Oh, do you know what? I was just looking at it just this morning. Um, there was a ring that we wore called the Oni ring, which is a black piece of like anthracite or something like that that had been digitally um, uh, played with and altered and put uh, chips in it and you could create uh, holograms of whatever you want to create a hologram of it did and it it transferred into your head and read your thoughts so that you could then have a hologram of whoever you were thinking of right in front of you talking to you I kind of fancied the only thing that would be a cool thing to have that would absolutely be a cool thing to have. Um, right now, in the modern era, uh, what is the one piece of tech that you wouldn't be able to live without? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm bored already by my answer. My phone, I think. I think my phone would be, it would be hard for me now. I, I think I, I do so much on it, as we all do. You know, to go back to a typewriter, I found one under the bed here the other day. Incredible thing, an Olivetti typewriter. It's a thing of great beauty. We started it up. My daughter played with it for like three minutes, and then we junk it. But uh, you know, but who would want to go back to typewriters? Who'd want to go back to ink? Who'd want to go back to you know threading that carbon ribbon around again? No, no. Well, 
something else you mentioned your phone and i know that you're uh very active on social media on twitter and just to give you kind of a a, a big question here um how do you feel that social media should moderate their content while on their platforms um what people uh, how should they moderate uh I feel very strongly, and I think a lot of people do, that Twitter seems to be going down the right route. Um, Facebook, you know, I, I, if you are a, a, a publisher of lies and if you're a publisher of falsehoods, you really need to pay attention to that. And it doesn't matter how big you are or how rich you are or how many households you reach, you can't go around spreading lies. You can't go around spreading mistruths. You can't go around to allowing people to use your publishing platform to tell terrible, filthy lies that have massive world, world global effect. I think Facebook needs to look Fair into enough. that. We all do. I think, I think we all feel that Facebook are, are dodging this one. Yeah, and I, I, that feels like a, an answer that we've heard from a few people with that. Um, Something else I wanted to ask you, and this is, you know, kind of bouncing all over, but switching gears. And this mm -hmm. is important because I saw this in entertainment. There is, was recently cast an artificially intelligent robot named Erica to play a lead role in a major Hollywood here. film. How would, no way. it's true. Yes, it, you can look it up. Yep. It's the, the robot is named the Erica. It's being, <laughs> it's being trained, yeah, by actors to act with other people. How would you feel about acting with a robot? Well, you know, I don't believe they can do it. I don't think they'd be fast enough. I don't think that they'll be nuanced enough. I think, you know, even now, the best video games, you can still tell it's a video game. The best, best ones, you can still tell it's a video game. So, um, you know, it doesn't look real to me. I, 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 even in that Martin Scorsese film recently, I, I thought I just didn't buy any of those special effects. I just didn't believe them when they looked young. You know, many years ago I was doing, or a few years ago I was doing um, a movie called John Carter for Disney, and they did one of those extraordinary things where they um, they laser map you and photograph you for 100, 360 degrees. So somewhere at Disney is me looking much younger and much more handsome and really fit, sadly. And um, I'd like to get hold of that <laughs> and put that in my new movies. <laughs> That's clearly the way to go. <laughs> How would you feel about, yeah, your image being used in a movie like that? I think it'd be fine as long as I had Final Cut. Unlikely, let's face it. But if I had, if they, if I could absolutely say oh, you can use it or not, um, if, depending on how well I thought they'd done it, I think I'd be fine. There we go. James, uh, one last uh, question here that I just wanted to ask, you know, your, your character, yeah. Joe Carroll, and I watched the following and I, I love that movie. You're, I saw somebody else actually quote you as being kind of a magnificent bastard in that, uh, which I think is, mm. is adequate. Um, yeah. For that role, is, is that something you would want, ever want to revisit? No. No, it was a very dark place and I'd done it for three years and by the time we got to the end of the third season, it had seeped into my unconscious in a way that I was not welcome. Um, uh, both Kevin, Kevin, uh, Kevin and I had I would have nightmares about that show, um, and I think that once it gets into that place, it's it's a it's a dark vortex. And I'd spent three years playing the most nihilistic and difficult character I've ever played, so um, I was kind of done. Fair enough. I mean, you did play it well, so that's, uh, I can only imagine. Well, thank well, you very much. This... It's very kind of you. Oh, I mean, it was, it was great. Um, you Good. were terrifying. But uh, talking about uh, Fisherman's Friends, uh, going back to that. So it's out on digital right now. What would you like people to take away from watching that movie? Do you know, I think that we live in a, a time where some politicians seek to divide a lot, divide us and and render us apart. This is a film about communities coming together. It's about a community and people and friends and love and kindness. And I think we need a lot more of that to be going on with. And that this will put a smile on your face and a little spring in your step and it'll make you, make you feel happy.
that you're part of the human race again because um, there's an awful lot going on at the moment which doesn't make us feel happy about being part of the human race. Well, James, I love that idea. And that is absolutely something I think that we can all use right now. And you are a yeah. pleasure. Thank you so much for being here on the show. Thank with you us so and much. Talking about sir. this. Yeah, James. Thank Purefoy. you so much for all right, having me. And, friends. And, yeah, take care. Bye. Yeah, thanks for having us in your uh, veggie patch. Uh, all right, James Purefoy right here. And again, Fisherman's Friends, it is out on digital. So I want to emphasize that too. July 24th is when it is coming out. So you can uh, catch it on there on digital, on demand. Uh, really appreciate them being here on the show.